uh, I guess we'll start with, do you have more frustration over the way it ended or that you weren't able to put it away earlier? Both. Because look, it, <clears throat> had we been able to close it out at one nothing, people would have said, well, we didn't play great, but it's three needed points at home. You know, but yeah, frustrated we couldn't generate anything more than a, you know, a, a handball with his arm out. And that was probably our best chance in the second half. Uh, you know, De La Vega hits the post from an impossible angle. I don't know what else was there, but you know, it's 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 a combination of both, Jeremiah. All right, we'll come front row here, Jose, and then Maz. The narrative of the team can't finish is, is clearly there, but the team stalls in the final third time and time again and then plays the ball back. Is that a tactic that you guys are implementing on purpose, or is that something that's just being done on the field that's not what you're wanting to, to happen? It's not a tactic. Why would anybody want to go negative all the time? It's not a tactic. Things happen, players make decisions. We encourage them to score goals and entertain our fans. Moss. Yeah, in that, Brian, so is that in terms of the one, is that the lack of recognition in terms of why there's some stagnation in the final third? Because you've talked about playing yeah. with the lead. Well, there's a lot of issues that we need to overcome set piece, gener generating chances from set pieces, moving our possession higher up the field a little bit faster, transition moments when we defend. I think we've done a great job defending on opponents' goal kicks. We ball turns over, you know, generating chances out of our transition moments. There's certainly final third issues. Uh, you know, the movement in the box for the first goal is one of our objectives. We had four guys in the box. The ball was there, was delivered. Guys were active. It was the first 15 minutes. And then somehow it slowed down. Ryan, just one more. Um, I was down on the field. Halftime, as you were walking into the locker room, you said something to Jordan. After That's a good goal. OK. Kid needed to. <laughs> Kid need to be rewarded for, you know, sticking with it. We'll come to the back row here. Go Paul, then Tim. Brian, you mentioned um, that you felt like the best chance in the second half was the arm extended. Um, did you feel like there's inconsistency in the, the decisions from the referees on the handball against Vancouver or potential? And, and what happened at the end? With New whose was a handball. New whose was a not a great tackle because he's normally a really good 1v1 defender for the first yellow and then coming out sliding they they're both I can't argue with the referee on that sequence of calls but what I can say is that when people will watch people will go and watch and you know he extends his arm well you know that's the referee's decision Tim and then yeah I see you on this side we'll come over Hey Brian um Paul kind of stole my question, but uh, what's the teaching point to, to Nuhu on that to to essentially not have his, is it as simple as not have his hand up in that in that situation, or what would you like to see him maybe do differently in, if, if that situation arises again? Well, Nuhu's blocked a lot of shots, and sometimes he jumps in, and look, it's hard. Uh, people, when they throw themselves that direction, sometimes your arms go up for balance. I've seen penalties call when, you know, you're falling down on the ground like this and you extend your arm to, you know, to brace the fall and it hits you in the arm and it's away from your body. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a hard thing for me to try and coach. What I can coach is making sure that Nuhu in that moment doesn't dive in to give away that free kick. That's the coaching moment. All right, we'll come down front row to Nico. Uh, thank you. Uh, coach, the, the, do you feel like maybe there's uh, anything else that you, you could have done in terms of trying to secure that game tactically, pushing up the lines, or did you feel like the plan was there, it was just finishing and execution? I thought we were good. I thought the game was, you know, going in our favor. 
You know, I didn't think they created a ton of dangerous attacks. You know, I had some half chances here or there. Uh, what I would have loved to do is figure out a way how to, again, extend our possessions a little higher up the field. That's what I would have liked to do. And what's the message to that group that, you know, they, I mean, it's got to feel terribly to get that draw the way it did? Yeah. Well, there, you got some upset guys in there, for sure. We'll go across the road to Nico Antoon. Coach, wanted to talk about Pedro De La Vega coming on. I uh, just wanted to know what your expectations were from, from his return to injury and what you made of his 15 minutes of playtime. It was good. I mean, my expectations, I think, are in line with a kid who hasn't played in a while. He's going to be a little rusty. He's got to, you know, understand and figure out the game and how he plays with his new teammates. So we'll continue to work on that. But you could tell he's got, you know, good feet, soft feet. You know, he can get around people. Uh, and we'll, we'll get him there. How important was it for, Coach, how important was it for Jordan to get that goal early in the game? Well, it was important, but he'll tell you. He's a nice kid. He'll tell you that he'd sacrifice that if we would have won the game. I mean, it was good for him, good start again. Getting him off, you know, well, he's got two goals now, but, you know, getting him to score more goals is going to be critical for us going down uh, down the road. Diego, una pregunta para ti. Eh, buenas. Eh, el, se, cobraron, se cobró un penal a favor del, del Vancouver y no se cobró otro a favor del Sanders. Ha habido ya errores arbitrales que han perjudicado al equipo anteriormente. A nivel dirigencial, eh, ¿se está pensando hacer algún reclamo? Y en cuanto a Pedro de la Vega, tuvo un buen retorno el día de hoy. ¿En, en cuántos partidos podría estar ya jugando 90 minutos? Gracias. Um, there was a pique, uh, penalty in favor of Vancouver and a penalty that was reviewed uh, uh, for Sounders. Um, and there seems to be that the decisions are not going necessarily our, our way. Is there any particular club effort that is going to happen to uh, analyze or review or claim some of these uh, things? And then the second question is, uh, Pedro de la Vega got into the game today. Um, he got some minutes. Do you have an estimation of how long it's going to take until he can play a full game? Pedro's on a time limit from our trainers. We'll build him his minutes gradually. He won't be able to start against St. Louis. Uh, as far as the, you know, the, the handball calls, you know, the card that was rescinded against Stefan Fry in D.C., it doesn't help us anymore. So there's nothing we can do. We can complain. I can, I can complain and pound the table, but it's not going to do any good. The game's already over. So... There's nothing the club can do to write a letter to the league, and they're not going to change the decision. Um, eh, en el caso de Pedro, Pedro de la Vega está en una situación en donde estamos dándole tiempo en cada partido. Eh, eh, todavía no está en el momento en el que pueda jugar 90 minutos. No creo que todavía empiece en el siguiente partido con St. Louis. Uh, en el caso de la tarjeta, eh, perdón, en el caso de las decisiones arbitrales. Eh, no hay nada que en realidad el club o nosotros podamos hacer otro que enviar reclamos, por ejemplo, se envía reclamo lo de la tarjeta roja de Stefan Fry, pero al final no cambia el resultado del partido, o sea que no hay, no hay mucha influencia que pueda haber en, en términos de cambiar los resultados. All right, we'll come over to this side. Yep, Jeremiah, time for a couple of follow-ups. Obviously, you're worried about, or you, you, you've talked a lot about the lack of scoring at home, especially. I mean, what left is there to do from from your side to to change that? And, and you know, what options do you feel like you have? Well, we'll have to try and figure out a way how to maybe shift things around when De La Vega comes. When he's able to start a game, it'll put pressure on guys because somebody's not going to be on the field. And that pressure hopefully raises the level of the group. We'll have more options coming off the bench. 
and hopefully that starts the team, you know, playing with a little bit more focus, a little bit more determination in those critical moments. We'll take two more. Felipe, I see your hand raised on Zoom. Please go ahead and ask your question. Felipe, you're on mute. Thank you. Uh, Coach Brian, uh, you've been talking about consistency in the past. And how is that coming along with the team? And uh, if you think that having uh, uh, Pedro and, and a more healthier team, you're going to find that consistency uh, faster than, than, than what, you've been, the, what the team has been showing. We hope so, Felipe. We haven't had consistent lineups. We haven't had consistent uh, players in attacking. Well, you know, look, Raul's had a good run out. Jordan's been back on the left, so I can't really say that. It's just the inclusion of Pedro, an important player like him, that is what's missing. Uh, and we'll see if we can't get him up to speed as fast as we can without risking injury. And the team will keep going. We'll keep, we'll keep after it. We'll keep trying. I think the, you know, the defending tonight was overall pretty good. So, you know, we'll need that against St. Louis away from home. Jose, we'll let you have the last one. Brian, what were some of the positive things that you saw up until the end of the game that, that gives you hope uh, to know that this is a rectifiable uh, scoreline? Well, just the first. 10, 15 minutes of the game when the team came out and played played well. I thought they were on the front foot. You know, I think the goal, you know, again, was getting the ball across there, numbers in the box, guys fighting. It's life or death inside the box, trying to score. And that was about, you know, the extent of it.